Hi, my name is Nicole, and this is the CK Diary Podcast. This is my podcast where I talk about all things crocheting and knitting and all of the things that I'm learning um, as I go. I hope you guys had a great week. I did. Um, I feel like I got a lot done this week, and I have a lot of exciting things to show you. Um, so I'll go ahead and start with my finished objects. I know that I have, oops, I know I've already shown you these socks. These are for my youngest son. Um, but this week I finished my oldest son's matching socks. Um, so you can see I did a different uh, cuff and toe color because I didn't have quite enough of the highlighter green to use. Um, I do have a lot of, obviously of this one. This is Cascade Yarns um, sock yarn. Ah, it's all tangled up. And this is the colorway Caribbean Sea. Very pretty. There you go. And that's only $13 a skein, uh, give or take. I mean, I, I'm sure it differs depending on where you buy it. Um, but a very great affordable uh, 70 or 80, mm, let me see, it is, where is it not, say, oh, 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. It's a very great affordable option. Um, all I used it for was for the uh, cuffs and toes on these socks, so that is why there's so much left, but even still, I got the leg and the foot of all four of these socks done and I still have so much of this yarn left. So this, I barely have any of the neon green. Um, so these yarns were both um, Emma's yarns from her trunk show for the um, Orange Blossom Yarn Crawl. They did not have colorway names. So let's see. The other finished object I will show you is not really a finished object, but I told you guys I would show you these squares as finished objects. Um, this is for my boys' traveling blankets. Um, I got one done. I got another started. This is also Emma's yarn. This is um, DK weight. And um, its colorway name was after the... Uh, retreat that she died at for for she sells yarn so it's not available anymore um and let's see this is the last finished object that I have to show you and I'm so excited about it I was about um maybe maybe a little over a quarter I wouldn't say quite a third um of the way done with this last time you guys saw it let me hold it back here first I've got my hairs are on it. I've been wearing this quite a lot since I finished it. This is the Round and Round Cowl by Kay Lidden. Oh, the socks are also Kay Lidden, the Crazy Sock Ladies pattern. The socks are Vanilla Sock on Magic Loop. Um, this is the Round and Round Cowl by Crazy Sock Lady. Um, and I use the Chelsea Yarns Valentine's Day minis for this. Not all of them, but most of them. Um... This was really, really fun to make. It worked up, I feel like it worked up rather quickly. I think I finished it in less than a week. Although it was the only thing I was working on. Um, I really like the way it turned out. Let me see if I can put this on without getting my hair too crazy. My hair is already crazy. We've been outside all morning going, jumping from park to park. But I really like the way it turned out. I really love the colors. I don't wear very many bright colors um, or very many colors at all, but I'm trying to change that. And um, knitting is making that a little bit easier because I find that I'm drawn to brighter colors whenever I'm knitting. All right, and let's see. I think that is all for finished objects. And now I can talk to you about my whips. So my first whip, um, you know what? Let me go grab my gauge swatch really quick. I wanna show you guys that. This is the gauge swatch that I made. It is very messy. It is the first gauge swatch I've ever done in a round. Um, I did not make these loose enough in the back here, so you're supposed to like carry the yarn. Um, I did not make them loose enough, so it didn't give it the full stretching opportunity um, during 
um, or whenever I was blocking the gape swatch because it was supposed to be a four by four square um, or a four inch square um, after blocking, but I did not make these loose enough so it didn't block out the way um, I was hoping it would. And I also dropped a few stitches while I was doing it. You can see that it is, um, let me see where it is. It is a lot bigger on this side than it is down here. Um, however, I did meet um, the length gauge. This is four inches after blocking. So I feel pretty confident. Maybe I'll regret that. I feel pretty confident with the needles that I have. So I just dove straight into my corium poncho that I had talked about doing last week. These were the only stitch markers I had available whenever I was knitting this while I was out the other day. Um, so this is what I used. They, these are from Knit and Stitch Boutique in Cocoa Beach, Florida. I got them for my son's socks because they are really into space right now. And this is what I have so far. Let's see if I can get it to focus. It is just a one by one rib that I'm doing right now. Nope, sorry, a two by two rib. German twist cast on. It is currently my favorite cast on. I feel, it makes me feel like I'm like doing a dance with my fingers. Um, and it also has like a pretty, really beautiful starting result. And I find, um, I find that my tension is much better with a German twist cast on than it is with like a normal cast on and even a little bit better than it is with um, the long tail cast on. And I don't know if that's just because it's so stretchy so it's a little bit more forgiving, but, um, and then the yarn is the apple cider um, on DK Rose or the Rose DK by Ruby and Roses. And it is just, even more beautiful, working up even more beautifully than I thought that it would. It has all kind, I mean, just speckles all throughout, but it has that really beautiful, like, mauve pink base that I really wanted. Um, and yesterday, something just like some life stuff. Yesterday, I took my boys to Chick-fil-A for breakfast, and I let them go play in the little play area um, while I was knitting. And... Um, I was sitting in the play area with them and a few other kids came in and their mom sat outside of the play area watching them and she had her daughter come in and ask me what I was doing. Um, and I told her I was knitting and that I had just started. Um, and she asked if I was, if I had made any clothes and I told her no, that I'd only made things like, uh, like accessories, like hats and the cowl and some socks and, um, her mom, whenever I walked out of the play area, her mom stopped me and she was like, do you knit clothes? And I said, no, I don't knit clothes yet, but I'm working on it. I said, I'm actually working on a poncho right now. And she was like, well, I have a niece who is a month and a half year, uh, or a month and a half years, a month and a half old. Um, and she said, do you think you'd be willing to knit a dress for her? I'd like to commission a dress. And um, I told her that I wasn't comfortable with that, but I really appreciated uh, the compliment because, uh, she she thought that what I was making was nice. She saw the socks because I also worked on the boys' socks a little bit. And um, I told her I appreciated it, but I wasn't comfortable enough yet with knitting um, to make something, you know, as a commission piece. Um, so then she was like, well, let me, let me at least show you what I'm talking about. So she showed me a couple of dresses that she had um, commissioned previously for her daughters, um, and they were crocheted. I told her that I've crocheted longer than I've been knitting and I was a little bit more comfortable with crocheting than I was knitting. So I would be willing to try to make a dress uh, for, since it's, she wanted a six month size and that's pretty small. And um, you know, I've, I've made a lot of amigurumi and I've done scarves and hats and all kinds of different things in crochet. So I was thinking, you know, maybe I'd be able to do that. And um, I gave her a realistic timeline and, um, I also told her that if I wasn't comfortable with it or if I felt like it wasn't turning out the way that I wanted it to, that um, I could share some other uh, crocheters with her that would be able to make what she wanted. Um, but she said she wanted to see what I could do first. And um, so I found the yarn, I gave her a price. She said, okay, so I have started that. Where did I set that? There it is. Nope, that's not it. Um, 
I don't remember the name of the pattern. I will leave that down below. But this is what I've started. This is like the yoke of the dress. So once I'm done with this, it will connect like this. And then it will be worked, oops, sorry. It will be worked down. So this is the top of the dress. One second, UPS is outside of my house. Sorry about that interruption. Uh, UPS came to my door and they had a package and I have to go get it. All right, so this is the dress that I'm making. It's worked top down. So this is going to be like the yoke of the dress. It will sit like that. Um, and then it will be worked down this way. It's kind of like a little baby doll dress. I don't remember the name of the pattern. Um, I'll link all of that down below. Um, the yarn that I'm using is 24-7 um, um, by Lion Brand. I'm trying to remember. I think it's just called Magenta. She wanted her dress to be pink and gold. And I'm just working with the pink right now. Sorry, my door just locked and it scared me. Okay. And um, that is all I have for that so far. I'm really excited to see how it turns out. Um, and I'm excited to see if she ends up liking it. I discussed patterns with her. I discussed colors with her. And um, she, she seemed like she kind of wanted me to just choose. Um, so I did. So hopefully she likes what I chose. Um, and then if it ends up not working out, we, I know plenty of people with little girls that might want the dress. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, I have fallen down a rabbit hole. So there were some project bags that I wanted that were sold out. And there were other project bags that I wanted that were a little out of my reach budget wise right now. Um, so I was like, should I start making my own project bags? And I was like, you know, the startup price is going to be more than just buying a project bag or two. However, um, once I start making my own, they'll be cheaper. Like, you know, it'll be less expensive over time. Um, so yesterday I went out and bought some fabric. I'm going to show that to you now. I got, well, I'll show you these ones first. So I bought this space theme fabric because like I said, my boys are really into space right now. And I thought that was cute. But then I went to Walmart. The, that was from Hobby Lobby. Then I went to Walmart and I found this space theme fabric. And I was like, oh, that's cuter for me. The other one's cute for the boys, but this one's like, it's sparkly and silver. I like that quite a bit. So then I got that. But then I went to Joanne's and I didn't go to Walmart or Joanne's for fabric. I only went to Hobby Lobby for fabric. The other ones were other, the, I went to Joanne's to get the yarn for the dress. And then I went to Walmart to get um, like sewing notions. Like I needed the big board that you can cut on and I needed some needles and bobbins and um, thread. So um, whenever I went to Joanne's though, I found this fabric and I mean, how cute, how cute is this? So I decided I might use this as like an interior lining um, for a bag, maybe like do like a, I got these colors because I thought this went well with this as like a lining and then a contrast color for the bottom of the bag. And then same thing here for lining and contrast color. So I was thinking maybe I could do like, um, I don't know, maybe a silver sparkly bag and do this as the inner lining because I don't need three space bags. I just needed one because I wanted to have it to put like my son's socks in whenever I was working on them. Now I have three space fabrics, but I will definitely be using this. Um, I think I'm gonna get like a pretty bright pink color for the lining and the contrast color at the bottom. I just thought this was so cute. Um, this one I might actually, my son, my oldest son's room is space themed and I got a yard of this. So I might just make, I mean, I don't, I've never sewn. I mean, I have sewn. I used to sew whenever I was a, whenever I was young. Um, I was in Girl Scouts for the better part of um, my school age years, all the way through junior high. Um, and we did the, um, it was like this, I think it was 1740s reenactment. 
and um, I got to be a part of that, but we had to make our own costumes. So I went over to my grandma's house for days and we just worked on that costume. And I, I had sewn quite a bit with her whenever I was a little girl. We, we sewed uh, pillowcases. She reminded me yesterday that um, she helped me make a dress for my piano recital whenever I was young and I had completely forgotten about that. Um, but I'm thinking that maybe I'll have enough to make two small pillows. I, I think I should be able to make two small pillows out of this. I mean, I don't see why not. They're gonna be very plain and very thin, but I thought that would be, and you know, it's like doubled. It's a yard, a yard of fabric. It has one more fold in it. So I think I'd have plenty. Like if I just cut it straight down the middle, I think I'd have plenty for two small pillows. We will see. And then um, this is the last fabric that I got. I got this from Hobby Lobby and this was for a pretty bag for myself. So this uh, navy blue will be the lining and then this will be the main, like the body of the bag. Oh, and this will be the contrast color. I think I'm um, little, oh gosh, I think her, you, I need to start writing down names because I always forget. Um, but I believe her YouTube is Little Drops of Wonderful. Again, I'll link that down below, um, but she has a video for a beginner's drawstring bag, a beginner's drawstring project bag, and so that is what I'm going to do to make this. So, the best part of my sewing story is that I posted on my neighborhood page, and we live in the most wonderful neighborhood. It is absolutely fantastic. We are surrounded by very selfless and loving people that love to give and they're very kind and um, I'm very grateful for it. Well, I posted in our neighborhood page and said that I needed a, um, or I asked if I could borrow somebody's sewing machine so I could try it out to see if I liked it before I went and purchased my own sewing machine. Um, and I had three women reach out almost immediately offering to let me borrow their sewing machine for a few days, which I just thought was, I was, a little overwhelmed, like, you know, overwhelmed with gratitude because um, I just couldn't believe, I didn't think that um, anyone would let me borrow a sewing machine because, you know, they can be expensive and they can be precious. And um, so I was just pretty surprised that three people had reached out almost immediately. Well, then a friend of mine had texted me and she saw my post in the neighborhood page and she was like, somebody just gave me a sewing machine and I never use it. Would you like it? So now I have a sewing machine for free and that's awesome. I very much appreciated that. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to get started on these project bags soon. Um, I think I need to finish this dress first. I told her I would try to have it done in a week, um, which I think is possible. It's very small. Um, the top is worked and all double crochet. And then um, the skirt of the dress is all granny stitch, which is also just, you know, clusters of double crochet. Um, but either way, I'm very excited about that. I'm going to try to update my Ravelry tonight. Um, I've got a, I mean, I don't think I've added anything about the cowl on there. I don't know that I've added my son's, my oldest son's socks. Yeah, I have a lot to, I have a lot to add. Um, I have not purchased any yarn while my husband was out of town and I'm very proud of that. <laughs> Um, I did purchase um, three sets of circular needles for my Corian poncho. Um, I got a uh, 16 inch four millimeter, 32 inch four millimeter, and a 32 inch five millimeter, all from Chowgu Red Lace. Um, and they're quite lovely to work with. And I really, I feel like I had so much to talk about and I feel like I got through it so quickly. Um, I think that's it. Um, well, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, thank you for taking some time with me to sit down and chat. Uh, I can't wait to show you more progress in my Cory and Poncho. Hopefully I'll have that dress done by the next podcast so I can show you that. Um, and I will see you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Bye.